Genocide in the foreground, world war looming in the background. If I were to describe our present geopolitical situation in ten words or less, it would be genocide in the foreground, world war looming in the background. While attention is justifiably focused on the present horrors in Gaza and the imminent possibility that it could spark another war in the Middle East, the world's power structures are once again dividing themselves up into two increasingly intimate alliance groups with an increasingly hostile and militaristic posture toward each other. As Ukraine loses more and more territory and soldiers to Russia, both Washington and Kyiv are demonstrating an openness to ramping up attacks on a nuclear superpower in ways that would have been unthinkable a few years ago. Meanwhile, Russia and China are growing more and more intimate in preparation for future aggressions from the U.S. Power Alliance. Anti-war's Dave DeCamp has a few articles out right now which highlight this disturbing trend simmering in the background amid the waking nightmare in the foreground, on top of all the other dangerous escalations we've been discussing in this space. In Blinken Signals U.S. Will Allow Long-Range Strikes in Russia with NATO Missiles, DeCamp writes the following, quote, On Wednesday, Secretary of State Antony Blinken strongly hinted that the U.S. was preparing to lift restrictions on Ukraine's use of U.S. and NATO missiles to support long-range strikes inside Russian territory, which would mark a significant escalation of the proxy war. Speaking at a press conference in Kyiv alongside U.K. Foreign Secretary David Lammy, Blinken said he discussed the issue of long-range fires with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and said he would bring the discussion back to Washington. He said President Biden and British Prime Minister Keir Starmer will discuss the issue when they meet this Friday. Signaling the U.S. is ready to support long-range strikes in Ukraine, Blinken said, Speaking for the United States, from day one, as you've heard me say, we have adjusted and adapted as needs have changed, as the battlefield has changed and I have no doubt that we'll continue to do that, end quote. DeCamp highlights new reports in the mainstream press that there's already been a decision made in private to allow Ukraine to use British-provided missiles inside Ukraine, and that the White House is finalizing plans to expand the area where Ukraine can hit inside Russia using U.S. and British-provided missiles, as well as recent statements from House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Michael McCall that the Biden administration appears poised to allow long-range strikes deep into Russian territory. Russia, needless to say, has not responded kindly to these comments. In Putin, supporting long-range strikes on Russian territory would put NATO at war with Russia, DeCamp writes the following, quote, Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday strongly warned the U.S. against allowing Ukraine to use NATO missiles in long-range strikes inside Russian territory, saying the move would put the Western military alliance at war with Russia. Putin's comments came after Politico reported that the White House was finalizing plans to expand the area inside Russia where Ukraine can use U.S. and British-provided missiles. This would, in a significant way, change the very nature of the conflict, Putin told a TV reporter, according to AFP. It would mean that NATO countries, the U.S., European countries, are at war with Russia. If that's the case, then taking into account the change of nature of the conflict, we will take the appropriate decisions based on the threats that we will face. He added that supporting long-range Ukrainian strikes inside Russian territory is a decision on whether NATO countries are directly involved in the military conflict or not, end quote. And it is here worth noting another article DeCamp published earlier this month on comments made by Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov, who said that Russia is preparing to change its nuclear doctrine in response to Western aggressions relating to the war in Ukraine. Finally, in Russia Says It Could Combine with China If Both Face Threat from the U.S., DeCamp provides more information on this horrifying direction we appear to be headed. Quote, Russian Foreign Ministry spokesman Maria Zakharova said Wednesday that Russia's partnership with China is not aimed at any third country, but the two countries could combine to respond to threats from the U.S.
I would like to remind you that Moscow and Beijing will respond to double containment by the United States with double counteraction, Zakharova said when asked about U.S. plans to deploy a Typhon missile system to Japan for several months, according to Reuters. It is clear that both Russia and China will react to the emergence of additional and very significant missile threats, and their reaction will be far from being political, which has also been repeatedly confirmed by the two countries, Zakharova said. Zakharova's comments come amid large-scale Russian naval drills that the Russian military said involve over 90,000 personnel, 400 warships and submarines, and 120 aircraft. China is participating in the Pacific portion of the drill, with three Chinese ships and 15 planes. Russia and China have increased their military cooperation in recent years directly in response to the similar pressure the two countries have been facing from the U.S. and its allies. Zakharova insisted the relationship is defensive in nature. End quote. As we've discussed many times here, the U.S. has been militarily encircling China in ways it would never tolerate from a foreign threat anywhere near its own borders. In much the same way, the U.S. and its allies knowingly provoked the war in Ukraine by amassing military threats on Russia's border. There's so much going on in the world right now, and the U.S. centralized empire is doing so many terrible things. But every once in a while, I think it's important to highlight the fact that all these individually awful things are just the mundane daily manifestations of a power structure that has us on a trajectory toward a final global confrontation that would make them all look like a picnic in the park. Status quo politics are quite literally driving us to Armageddon. Freeing ourselves from these murderous tyrants is swiftly moving beyond the morally correct thing to do for the sake of the empire's victims around the world to an existentially urgent action we must take for our own self-preservation.